consulted with a bunch of folks back in October, and there was a version of this roadmap that uh, got a lot of feedback at the Sakai Virtual Conference in November. Um, so there were some, there was a survey, and I'll share some feedback from that. There were some birds of a feather conversations, and the result was an iterated version of the roadmap that you see in front of you that includes that feedback. So my my job here is to share back with you how this is evolving and get your additional feedback. You know, so there'll be opportunities to react to what you see here, to advocate for things to be higher in the list, to uh, you know, raise concerns about something that has, uh, you know, that is considered to be of great importance. You know, so I think all those all those possibilities are on the table. Uh, Josh, so, can you share your screen? Yes, so I would be glad to share my screen. Um, and I forgot to turn the recorder on earlier, so I turned it on just as you started talking. So, oh, okay. <laughs> all right. So, <clears throat> so here here is that roadmap document. I know a, a bunch of you are in the document itself. Uh, here it is on screen. So let me let me share what I think are the key insights from the survey that we conducted in November of 2022. So this was essentially part of what I did at the virtual conference was promoting this survey so we could get more input. So the key findings, as I understand it, are these, and the number of respondents was 72. So it's it's a uh, it's it's a pretty decent level of response from our community. So a majority of respondents, 56% feel that improving existing capabilities in Sakai is more important at this moment than developing new capabilities. So 56% thought improving existing was ought, ought to be our priority. 44% thought that developing all new stuff ought to be our priority. Um, and of the possible new features that have been discussed in recent months in the community, there is an opportunity to weigh in on those and, and share the level of importance of each one. So the two that come to the top of the pile are course analytics and lessons improvements, uh, followed uh, closely by grader and grading, which is less defined than some of the rest, uh, and course import and copy, which has been much, much talked about. So my takeaway from all of this <clears throat> is that focusing on improving existing capabilities is where our focus ought to be uh, with the with the exception of course analytics, which is another place where our focus ought to be. It's the, it's the area that was, it's the single feature that has been asked for and advocated for the most and got the most support in the community survey. And if I, if I look at these top four things, I think, all right, so course analytics has got to be a place to replace our focus. Lessons is hopefully a place where Dayton will continue to place its focus. So I think we can we can look for some uh, some improvements there to to address the fact that it's it's high on people's lists. Grader and grading, I you know I think grading is always important because we know that that's what you know grading and discussions are where instructors spend most of their time. So that's that's always important, and I think there are things that we can do there. It's not as not as well defined as the first two areas or this fourth one. Uh, course import and copy, which has a bunch of JIRAs attached to it. So there's there's a lot that we can do there. Those are those are my takeaways at a, at a high level in terms of what what we're hearing from you guys, what the community wants. Let me pause there and seek your reactions to all of that before we dive into the details of the user experience roadmap. So what are your reactions? What are your observations? Does this sound right to you? Is there something missing that's not here? Would you would you interpret these findings differently? I'd love to hear what you think. I think personally you've interpreted them correctly. Everyone wants new features, um, but some of the features that we, you know, that we really look for are uh, the course analytics, things that help with strategic planning for an institution, you know, and, and student success all at the same time. Um, but yet, of course, we always want to improve uh, the software as a, as a general whole. Um, so I think it's very on target. Does everybody else agree? I agree. Um, and I will say I'm personally glad to see the course important copy still keeps its place on like the top of the you near know, the top of the list for various priorities because that's always been one of mine yeah you've, you've been an amazing champion for that 
And I think there there probably is going to be a time where we can say, all right, so let's let's go through the Jiras that are out there and try and prioritize with them, or uh, you know, or failing that, you know, remind Josh where those priorities have been set in the past. <laughs> Um, so anyway, I think there's there's going to be an opportunity to champion that going forward. Other other comments, um, Alan, Jennifer, Leanne, feedback about these top level insights before we dive in more deeply. Alan writes important it, analytics is important for sure in the chat and he's still writing. Yeah, course copy. Okay. All right. So any other top level comments before we dive in to the user experience roadmap in detail? All right, let's do that then. So, so the user experience roadmap is one part of the overall roadmap. There's also a technical roadmap that uh, I just consulted with the core team about. <clears throat> so there was uh, there were two conversations about that to set priorities, and there was a follow-on conversation with the core team. It seems like the technical roadmap, which is further below in this document, anyone can take a look at it when they when you would like to is uh, it's a decently useful set of priorities. And there's always this feasibility layer that helps us figure out of the high priority things, you know, in what order we actually tackle them. So, so there, there is that, and I'll, I'll leave that to you to, to dig into. We can certainly talk about it in this meeting if you want to. Um, but I was really hoping to get your feedback on the user experience roadmap. And so this is broken as it has been in the past into three years worth of work. So it, it, uh, this tries to delineate what we hope to accomplish in 2024 from what we hope to accomplish in 2025 and 2026. And there are three streams here currently. There are all new features, improvements to existing features, and what we're calling ongoing investments, which is just the ongoing work that we need to, you know, to sort of keep things moving forward and to keep things improving. Sometimes the areas of ongoing investment are not quite as exciting to talk about as actual improvements or brand new features. And it's important just to make sure that they don't, they don't fall off to the wayside. So, and I, there's one other thing that I should note, two other things I should note about this roadmap. So you can see the, you can see the, the, the pluses. And so those articulate the levels of support that each of these has gotten. So some of these, there were multiple conversations uh, about the user experience roadmap in the last round. So if you see uh, multiple sets of pluses, that just addresses uh, feedback and support in one conversation, feedback and support in a second conversation. Um, and I wanted not to just fold them in and make it you know hard to know which, which was which. So that's that's one thing you can see here. So we, you can see what level of support we have given to each of these different items. And you can also see two other additions. So in the new features column in 2024 and 2025, there is uh, what I'm calling the S2U Unidigital Plan Phase 1 and Phase 2 of that plan. So, and I tried to capture a little bit further down in the document what the top level most impactful new features are that we expect from the S2U Unidigital Plan. And this is the, the work that our friends in Spain are doing with funding from the European Union to improve Sakai based upon what the six or seven Spanish institutions have identified as their priorities. So it's going to be a whole lot of Microsoft Office 365 integrations. Uh, it's going to be uh, a safe exam browser integration. So for, for proctoring support, improvements to rubrics and improvements to time tracking and reporting. And there's a whole lot more in the, in the, the plan that's linked from this document. So I'm, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to make sure that that the, the work in Spain is being properly represented without being terribly detailed about when we expect to see this work, because uh, some of it will be folded in in 2024 and some of it in 2025, and it's not entirely clear at this moment 
what what features we can expect to see in each year that will become clear all the development will be done in calendar 2023 so we will know this but we don't know this at the moment so let me let me ask for your feedback first about the items in 2024 in some ways this uh what we're what we've got on the docket for 2024 mirrors in a lot of ways uh, the the top level findings of the survey. So you can see that analytics got a lot of support both in the survey and in conversations. Uh, the limited mobile app, uh, which will provide for notifications in 2024, is not on is not on the survey, but has gotten a lot of support and a lot of work has gone into that. Lessons usability improvements. Uh, th these are the ones that have risen to the surface in the past and have gotten a whole lot of support. I've been chatting with Dayton about these and trying to get these on their roadmap for lessons. So a lot of this is about accessibility, accessible templates for instructors, uh, making the collapsible sections more accessible, uh, some improvements to UI to add headings more easily. Julianne Al Morgan from uh, Dayton also has a huge laundry list of lessons improvements that she's been working on. So I'm sure some of those will find their way into the work. And in the ongoing investment stream, course copy and publishing has gotten a lot of support. Uh, consistent and easier to understand language throughout Sakai has gotten a lot of support. And that's been something that this group has started to work on in terms of developing what that language ought to be. And then there's a follow on implementation on the developer side to, to implement that language. So what, what I see here is uh, similar leanings in terms of support toward analytics, toward lessons, toward course copy and publishing, uh, with the addition of the mobile app being an area that where we have put a lot of uh, a lot of support in the past. So uh, when I say in the past, in the past few weeks and months. So let me pause there. Let me ask you um, about your feedback about this. So are there, you know, what are your reactions to what you see here? Do you feel that the level of support that you're seeing here is warranted? Would you advocate for something else? to receive more support than these items that you're seeing here? Would you advocate for something that has a slightly lower level of support in 2025 to be pushed ahead in the process? So let me pose all of those questions to you and pause for your reactions at this moment. Hearing silence, maybe what we'll do is, and it's hard to interpret what, what silence is. Yeah, yeah, I, it, it, yeah. It, it, it is a lot to take in. Um, so why don't, we, why don't we go around the room real quickly and you know, just give people an opportunity to, to give their, their feedback, you know, whatever, whatever comes to mind. And this is truthfully the start of a process. So this document will remain open to you. You can go back in and add your feedback via comment in this document. Uh, at any point, it's gonna be open for probably till the, the end of the month. And then I will iterate one more time in, in advance of Sakai Camp. So we've got a couple of weeks to, to tackle this. So maybe uh, we can start off with comments from Wilma and Didi and then circle around the rest of the room. So, uh, you know, what are your reactions? Does this seem right? Is there something that's missing? And you're, you're welcome to pass if you would like to. So um, Didi, may, maybe we'll start with you if that's okay. Fine, that bus is not big at all. Okay, um, I think we're on track. I think we're moving forward in a direction I like to see, that this is my personal opinion, but things like you know, a mobile app for notifications is something that's been requested for some time because many of the mobile features that we expected and hoped for in uh, some of our past iterations had not been come, come to fruition. So since that is you know something I can see being a, a huge benefit, annotating documents previewed within SkyGrader is the first thing that many people, you know, many instructors find that the, they expected to be able to do the minute they saw it. So they were kind of disappointed and I look forward to not disappointing them anymore um, and uh, you know the smart agents that we have in in the future versions that that's a brilliant idea and I love whoever thought of it okay Wilma that bus is now at you okay um, so I think overall the um, the roadmap looks pretty good it's it's definitely um, got a lot of the things on there that people have been requesting um, 
and that I think are really needed to keep advancing. So Kai, I do think that there's probably stuff that's not on here, um, but that's the sort of thing that kind of comes up when there's resources or when there's somebody that is sort of pushing for a particular feature. So I think it's okay to not include some of those things that might pop up um, because it's not like a big uh, initiative for the overall community and maybe it's a little more um, of you know one or two institutions inter interested in something. Um, so I think that uh, there's there's room to kind of insert those special projects even though they're not on the roadmap. So um, overall I think it's a good representation of, of what we need to do. Who would like to offer their feedback next? Um, maybe uh, maybe Christina, Jennifer. I'm willing to jump in since the drilling has stopped for the moment. Um, I really do like a lot of these things. A lot of the things I'm seeing have been some of my pain points and some things I can definitely know instructors wish. You know, I have my personal wish list of a lot of smaller features and changes. I usually do. <laughs> but I think as far as big initiatives go, I think this is a pretty good plan. And Jennifer says in the chat, uh, good representation. She agrees about uh, the mobile app and, uh, you know, and underscores the importance of analytics. It seems like there's, there's a whole lot of agreement around that. Um, the, the current plan for analytics, just so you guys know, is we've been talking with a few institutions that have been interested in this over time. <clears throat> I don't think I've done a good enough job closing the loop with everyone. And if you're one of those people, I apologize. Um, but the, the general plan is, is for Adrian to start working on uh, some pieces of the analytics puzzle in, you know, really in, in the first half of this year, you know, so the idea would be to have uh, some of that available for testing in, uh, in April sometime and a little bit more to be available for testing in, um, in May. So, and this will build upon the preliminary reports list that Wilma has been creating and circulating for input. So I would expect, um, I mean, the, the, the plan at this moment is to do the development around uh, tracking and discovering course outcomes and linking those with course activities in the Q1, Q2 timeframe and a, and some, some reporting, some reporting on, on, on grades in that time frame as well. And then some reporting on rubrics and their, and their outcomes in the May timeframe. That's the, the high level plan at this moment. And it, it, it can be something that, uh, you know, we can do more, we can adjust a little bit. Uh, you know, I'd be interested to hear feedback from, from folks in this room about that. But as we think about analytics, that's the, that's the, the, the general structure. And I'm happy to talk in more detail with any of you who are, who are interested in that. Um, let's see. So folks who haven't weighed in yet and might like to, um, Alan, Leanne, would you guys like to share your feedback? Alan is typing. Alan is succinct. He says mobile is critical. Leanne, do you have thoughts that you want to share? Alan and Leanne are typing. Um, Alan's interested, Alan's advocating for, for the grading changes in 2025. I mean, it, currently that's envisioned as a, a dashboard widget that surfaces students' grades uh, more easily. Uh, but I, I know that there have, has been interest in other kinds of facelifts to, uh, to gradebook in particular. So I think I, I, would, I would lean on, on this group to try and define those a little bit more. So we can surface those for, we can surface the, the, the things that are defined for some priority setting. 
Leanne says, I think this looks good. Didi says the grading widget would be wonderful. Yeah, the grading widget would, would be wonderful. Um, I was kind of hoping we would see that sooner, um, but it doesn't seem at this particular moment that we will. All right. Um, so that is, that is generally what I have for you. I mean, it, it sounds like I'm not hearing a lot of advocacy for something that looks different from this. It sounds like this group is uh, largely validating the uh, the priorities that were set in in terms of the the support that was received in the November round of feedback. So that's a that's that's a good thing. Are there? I'm you know so I think that this is this is the feedback that I was hoping for, not the validation necessarily, but just you know giving you guys a chance to weigh in. And I want to reiterate that. You can feel free to go back to this document at any point in the next couple of weeks, leave some comments anytime before the end of the month. You can feel free to advocate or, or comment in any way and just sort of add your thoughts to this document so that when I make version two the next iteration, it takes your feedback into account. So are there any other comments, thoughts, reactions, observations to what you're seeing here? And then I think we can probably move on to the next agenda item. Ah, got it. Okay. Um, Alan linked to Ajira, so that's that's helpful. Uh, when was this one authored? Got it. Okay, I put a I put a note in the a comment in the document that uh, that references that Jira. So thank you for that. All right. Any other feedback? I'm happy to chat about this stuff at any point. Please go back into the document and add your comments. Um, and if you, um, and then we'll we'll have a follow-on discussion about all of this at Sakai Camp. All right, Wilma Didi, so back over much. to you. This is really great. Thank you so much for all your work, Josh. My pleasure. Yes, thank you for keeping us organized and, and iterating on the roadmap. It's been a really useful planning tool, I think. We've seen a lot of new improvements over the last few years since we've been doing the roadmap. So I think that's definitely contributed to that. Um, so thanks for all your work on that. So we have some extra time, which I, I thought we would spend longer actually on, on um, roadmap. So we can do um, Jira's if you like, um, or if there's anything else that anyone would like to toss out there for discussion. Jirapalooza. Okay, Alan is suggesting a Jira. So let me go ahead and um, share my screen. We've got something to look at. Just getting my screen share going. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at the one that Alan posted in the chat here. Alan, would you like to walk us through this one? Happy to, if you can hear me okay. Yep. Um. You know, every every institution does course creation in a different way. We pre-create empty classes and expect people to import stuff. Uh, although we try to tell people, hey, merge is best, um, people inevitably do replace. And they go the wrong direction. Basically, 
overriding their old class versus importing the old stuff into the new one. <clears throat> and uh, so they erase everything. Then we have to beg and plead with uh, long sight to go back to a uh, uh, previous iteration. And then they go through tons of effort because it's not an easy job to, to, to pull one of these things <clears throat> from the database, et cetera. So this is just a, could we move the merge one to be the first one on the list versus the second one on the list, moving replace to the, the second one on the list, basically switching the order. Um, and um, so that's item number one. And then try to Im improve some of the language uh, just to try to reduce the number of people who accidentally go the wrong direction. Um, if you go to the testing plan, I actually outline everything there. Um, so, um, you know, I've got the before the change and after the change. So before the change, if you're on the latest like trunk, you'll notice that each of the actions are actually not bolded or underlined in the new UI. Uh, so I'd at least like the actual actions to be bolded in the new UI, <laughs> um, or some way that it's clear that you could click on those things. There's a subtle slight bluish tint to the link, but uh, it's not very obvious compared to the darker gray text around it. So, I mean, that's UI, that's independent of this, but basically, um, instead of the first option being, I would like to be replaced, it would be moving the merge. And then you'll notice a, a few language changes um, where I've added uh, a be careful in the beginning of the, I would like to replace my data and I've clarified the actions a bit. Now that language is totally, anybody could go ahead and say, that's not as clear to me, let's do X, Y, and Z instead. Open to any and all, all feedback and suggestions on how to improve it are welcome. Uh, the next thing, if you scroll down there, Wilma, is the I would like to replace my data page. There are some challenges on the page. Um, where the, the main heading says import material from other sites, plural, but the reality is, is you can only choose one thing on that page. The merge, you can actually choose multiple sites, but on the replace, it's all radio buttons. So that language was not clear. Also, I suggest adding a little bit more, you know, guidance on the page to explain, you know, hey, you, you better be in the right site because this stuff's going to go bye-bye. Um, so that's some language changes. And if you go down to the next one, I would like to merge my data. There's actually a, the heading is missing on this page and the location of the description is not consistent with some of the other pages. So I'm um, you know, suggesting several changes to kind of get into alignment. And uh, there's also a duplicate heading on this page. So there's a number of things that need to be kind of cleaned up in my opinion on this page. Um, so anyway, these are just thoughts on how to improve this. And most of these are just minor move content here, change a description, reorder. I, I'm not changing functionality whatsoever. Um, although it'd be lovely to have some validation or something beforehand that says, hey, just to confirm on the replace, you're going to take content from this site and overwrite it into the new site. Is this the correct direction? Uh, continue or cancel or something. But that, that would be a separate JIRA, I think. Those are my thoughts. That's, I think that just came helpful. up again because we had more faculty this semester go the wrong way and we're tearing out our hair. I don't have hair anyway, so we're tearing out our hair um, with, with folks going the wrong direction. We create courses the same way you do. We have the faculty create their course and then we tell them to import into the new course. I don't think we've ever had anybody do it backwards. So, um, but I think the text that you have there makes a, a very big change that is good, that is very positive, that is clarifying. Um, I, I vote cool. Yeah, I think these are some really good improvements, Alan. I, we're, you're not the only one. Pepperdine's definitely not the only one that they sometimes have faculty copying in the wrong direction. So, um, 
I'm we, glad we that Maris does it, but it, it, it does happen. So anything to make it more clear would be great. And Jennifer mentioned that they have a customization where they removed the replace option um, from the UI. So that's something that we customized for them. Um, I don't know that know... we necessarily want to remove it, but. Right, you know. right. But does anyone know, because it, it used to say that, hey, only gradebook settings would come over if you chose replace. But is that still real? I'm not sure. Because gradebook items come over, you know, is the only setting like, like the schema or something? You know, like I'm. I'm wondering I'm if curious. It's more like the settings don't come over if you choose merge, because then it has to choose which settings, which, site? which settings are the ones that keep the original ones or the merged ones. So it might be more of a message that imp that replacing is the only one that brings in the gradebook settings exactly from the source site you mean yeah like overwriting it okay mm -hmm. and i see adrian says maybe we could figure out a way to do a confirm or whatever That would be a nice step too, Adrian, even just a thing that says you are copying the content from this site into this site. You know, you will merge the data and keep both or you will clobber. Right. <laughs> I, I have defined clob. I, I claim clobber is a technical term. It is a technical term for sure. <laughs> the you Fantastic Four agree. Are you sure this is what you want? Right. I don't, I don't know if the uh, size of a site is very easy to get, but I almost want to say, you know, you are going to get, you know, you're taking the content from this site, you know, zero K <laughs> uh, and copying it into this site, you know, two gigs or <laughs> whatever. Or maybe even the list of what's getting replaced. You're putting zero assignments, assignments. In, on top and replacing 13 assignments. And overwriting 13, right. Yeah, nice to hear that we're not the only ones that have made this mistake. But anyway, that just my thoughts. Um, I think this would be a subtle improvement. Maybe I could create a separate JIRA on the um, confirmation page. Um, uh, Cause that would be more functionality versus just some text reordering. So, so I'd, thanks I'd, for your time. I'd, I'd add that. I would add that to this JIRA. I'd, I'd go ahead and just add that like as an option. I'll just add notes it in this JIRA. That we can just, okay. cause, I mean, that, that is not a that is not a big job at it. Just having a JS confirm, right? And it just it just adds a, a final sanity check, doesn't it? Do you know what I mean? Even if it's yeah, even if even if it's not got like the megabyte size or whatever, right? Even if it just says you are literally going to replace all the data in the target site now when you click this. You know what I mean? It's the final. Yeah, yeah. that's an easy. That's a, on on top of this. So that's an easy addition to this this year as well. I'd add it to this one instead of creating a separate one. Okay. I'll, I'll go ahead and edit then. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. So nice having Adrian on the call because he knows whether it's an easy change or a hard one. Um, a lot of times we're not sure. So that's good to know that the confirmation isn't that big a deal. Yeah, it's very no, nice. Definitely Thank you. Yeah. I mean, you know, doing, doing like a wizard page will be obviously more effort, right? Because you you got another template and so on and so forth. but. This is easy though, yeah. Awesome. Okay. So Alan, you're gonna update the the Jira to add that piece. And um after the call, I'll just add a comment that we talked about it today at teaching and learning and everyone was in agreement that it's a good idea. Um I'm, I'm editing now. Okay, great. I'll go back later so you guys don't have to watch me type. Um, so do we have another suggestion for a JIRA that people would like to look at, or should we just grab one from the, our parking lot? Wilma, I threw one in there um, just below Allen's. Well, oh, okay, I see it. Here. I'd love to see if this is a 10-minute yeah. this is a ten minute fix. Okay. Go ahead and give us the lowdown. We use, um, we call them base courses, but template sites for a course. So 
let's say Amy has created the master template for comp one. She has, she shares it with all the instructors who teach comp one. So they're all members of that site as instructors. They copy that to each of their spring classes. Another instructor then, you know, Amy retires and, you know, Sherry takes over that course. Sherry updates it. the instructors continue to copy. But anyway, we have some base courses where um, they're randomly drawn from question pools. And at this point, I don't know who owns those question pools anymore. So to say, okay, we need to update them or we need to transfer ownership of them or share those pools, I don't know who to poke. So I was looking for a way like in the assessment builder where it says um, the questions for this part were generated from question pool, you know, pool one. I just want to add owned by Wilma. So if I'm an instructor who copied this from a copy from a copy, and I think those test questions are out of date, I now know to go poke Wilma, hey, can you either update those test questions or share that pool with me so I can cop so I can, you know, copy them and update them or be able to do something with them rather than me, me having to go and look at every single account that may have been the one who owned it, trying to find where these question pools actually are. I think that's a great idea. Um, Cause it is, if you've copied it several times, you have no clue <laughs> who the original owner was. Um, Adrian, is that a hard thing to find the owner of a pool? Um, I have literally no idea. I'd have to look at the code about that. I mean, uh, probably isn't probably isn't but i mean you, you know how arcane i mean the, the tables for tests and quizzes are pretty pretty arcane so i'd have to go and have a look i can give you a straight answer now okay well if you probably not hard it, probably not it. probably not hard you know if you bounce what is that christina tab, if you bounce to the general tab on there i've got a copy of what the current like question pool oh, okay. says and just the little So just, you know, instead of just saying from pool updated on this date at this time, pool owned by, you know, Wilma Hodges. So this is like the original creator of the pool, right? Or is it is it the person who last copied it? The person who owns that pool, because, you know, the, the question pools follow the user around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. So... Who, who do I need to poke to either get those questions updated yeah. or get them shared? Yeah, I can yeah, because you can transfer ownership, you can share them, but you need to know who owns them in the first place to be able to do either of those things. Yeah, if right, there's right. a way to transfer, I mean, it must be tracking the owner of the pool. We just, you know, don't know where that I'm data sure is. I'm, I'm, I'm just being cagey. I'm being cagey because it's because it's Sammy go. Yeah, <laughs> that's all. <laughs> quizzes and testing quizzes is a beast yeah, yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> but this popped up in my mind just because i was in this situation just this month i had an instructor's you know ask me for help getting these question pools you know that are in a class that she now was taking responsibility for getting them updated and broken down from being, you know, test one containing, th you know, three chapters worth of questions to try to break it down into the individual chapters and everything. And I'm sitting here going, I have no idea who owns this pool. You know, I checked three different accounts and couldn't find a pool by that name. So I'm at my wits end with that one. Yeah, that's why I always like when the rubric stuff started, I'm like, they need to be owned by the course, not by the user because of this problem. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we'll have to do some investigation, it sounds like, um, to see how 
uh, how difficult San Diego is going to make it <laughs> to find that data, but we know it's in there somewhere. So hopefully it, 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 it's it not too really hard. Easy. Yeah, yeah. It may be really easy. But you know, I, I just I never like to give a <laughs> definitive answer. On <laughs> yeah, but I think we can all agree that it would be a really good improvement. Oh um, yeah. So. yeah, anything like anything like this is, is is great. You know, it can just ease the path. You know. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, bye, Dee Dee. Sorry, you have to run. All right, so we've got 12 minutes. I think we probably have time for one more JIRA. Um, does anyone have a suggestion or would you like to pick one of the ones that we have from before? And let me just copy this one into our list. So I know we talked about, oops. Oh, darn, I accidentally shut down the etherpad. That back up. That's what I get for having too, too many windows open. Um, all right, so we talked about this one. All right. Let's see here. Um, any other suggestions? Or I'll just take the first one. All right, let's take a look at this one and see what it is. Assignment except until date for the resubmission section should match um, the assignment except until date. Okay, so this is just copying over if you do a resubmission. Let's see what the image here is. Oh, so that's like when you're creating it, it should just pick up whatever date you put up here. That would definitely be a plus one. I mean, it's a time saver, right? Yeah. Because it's frustrating that I just entered the acceptance date, you know? Yeah. Like, why, why do I have to start over again? You know, at least give me the foundation of what I did before. I could change it from there if I need to, but uh, right. it's not going to be right. probably any earlier than that. So... Yeah, it couldn't be. It would kick it back, right? If the date was earlier. I think this was a this is an easy S yes uh on this one. Sounds like a good improvement. Any other comments on this one? Well, I mean, the question is, is like there's creation, right? Where you select it and it should populate. But then he also said in that description when edited. So I don't know if if he's talking about on creation when you go ahead and change the accept until date to populate it, or if it's if it's on edit, if you change the accept until date in one place. I don't know if if you edit something and you change the accept until date in one place, I don't know. Uh, everybody else might be able to chime in. I don't know if that necessarily means that the re-accept until I needs to change. I'm personally against having an editing an existing one, auto changing anything because right. That just seems to me like an instructor not realizing something else got changed and just quickly going in and going fixing something or whatever. Yeah, I can see it easily popping through on creation, but. On edit, I'd rather, yeah. the only thing changing is the thing the instructor is actively editing. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. So maybe that note could be put in, you know, excellent yeah. change for creation of a new assignment. But, but not um, for editing an existing. Yeah, right. I, I agree with that. Because you don't want to change things on people and they may not be aware of it. So, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. All right, I will add that note. Um, let me, oops, that's the roadmap. Where's the, there it is. Okay, so I just want to make sure that I don't forget which ones to go back to comment on. <laughs> yes, for new, not for edit. I'll make that more readable later, but just so I remember. Um, oh, wait, that was, is that the right one? Oh, I put the wrong one in there. It's this one. 
the other one was Christina's. Okay. Um, all right. So let's see. Well, we're getting close to the end of the hour. So we'll just kind of go over our um, upcoming meetings. And uh, oops, let me take this off here because it's out of our parking lot. Um, so next time, our next meeting will be February 1st. And we had planned uh, back in December when we were kind of looking ahead, um, we had planned to do a follow-up session on escape room building um, in Xerti on February 1st. Is everyone still good with that? Or would you like to swap that out with other uh, things? Adrian says he'll be at Sakai camp on the 1st. February 1st, that's the week before. How, how early are you coming to Orlando? <laughs> no. Sorry, no, no, no connection there. I just, I just thought I'd put that on right. <laughs> you could lure people in or scare them off, you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if everyone's still good with that, we can plan to do that, or we could switch to one of these other um Things that we have planned the trinity ui sakai analytics list of reports or i see in the chat alan says he's working on some grading schema mock-ups so if you want to push the xerti session we could do one of those um so i'm fine doing any of those whichever one the group would like to do first No opinions. I see Alan typing, so I'm going to wait and see what he types. Okay, Alan's not going to be around on the first. Um, all right, so we'll stick with our plan to do um, escape room building, at least a start uh, on that in Xerti. Um, and so if you do plan to um, to try building an escape room, or at least start building an escape room, um, bring some assets. I'll bring some that people can use as a sample. But if you have stuff of your own, it'll be nice because then you could use it later. Um, so ideally bring a list of questions in your subject area, um, whatever that might be. And then maybe some images, some photos or um, other images related to the subject, and we'll use those for creating some um, kind of areas to click on and questions to answer to work our way through uh, an escape room scenario. So um, if you're going to come to the Xerti session on February 1st, please bring that stuff, and I'll send out a reminder to people on the list in case they had to drop off already. So um, thank you guys so much for joining us today um, for a great discussion on the roadmap and the JIRAs that we took a look at. And I will see you guys uh, in a couple weeks. So take care. And again, for those of you attending Sakai Camp, um, be sure to fill out the, uh, the event form registration so we know you're coming. All right. Take care, everybody. Yep. See you all. Bye. Thank you so much.